talk about Bajaj Allianz. Uh, what does it take to really build a leading insurance franchise? 60% of sectoral profit share, huge play on leveraging, digital capabilities, the competitive landscape. Uh, let's get a sense of all of that. Joining us right now, Tapan Singhal, the uh, MD and CEO at Bajaj Allianz uh, General Insurance, uh, joining in on the show right now. Tapas, hi, morning. Uh, what are the factors that contribute to your leadership position and for you to outperform in this current market? If you look at business, especially insurance, and if you look at it from a long-term perspective, you would actually get it right. I had to see a successful insurance company, which if you look at the big names in the world, uh, Allianz, uh, AIG, uh, Axis, they'd all be close to 100 years. Uh, so when you look at business from that perspective, and you build the loyalty of customers, and serve them well, and you come out with relevant products, and you keep innovating and changing with times, uh, you will outperform the market. I think if the intentions are good, uh, there's no reason why you don't outperform the market. It's as simple as that. Right. Uh, you know, you have a 60% or I can safely call it the lion's share of profits in the sector. How is it that you've managed to achieve this? So one of our belief has been that if a company does not make profit, it cannot serve the customer well. So let me explain this sentence of uh, mine. Uh, in an insurance company, there are three outgoes. Uh, one is uh, claims, uh, second is um, commission uh, to the distributors, and third is your expenses running the company. Now, when companies are making reasonable profit, they don't cut corners on claims, because other two is already incurred. No, your expenses already incurred, and uh, your commission already got paid. And you're not making profit, the pressure on you to cut corners on claims will be very, very high. Companies which uh, make profit are able to serve customers well. So we look at Bajaj Alliance, not only we have good uh, percentage of profit uh, pool in the industry, but our customer settlement is one of the highest. Our grievance is one of the lowest industry. So we should look at the correlation of uh, making profit and grievance and uh, claim settlement. There's a direct correlation. I think that is why our obsession to underwrite well, our obsession to ensure that we are able to give the right price for the right product to the right customer, leads us to the sweet spot we're able to grow business and also make uh, profits. And because we make profits, we serve our customer very well. I think this is how this, this, is, this is a positive cycle which keeps on playing itself. And if you get this wrong, then obviously hit into a negative a vicious cycle. Mr. Singhal, how is the competitive landscape between ICICI, Pru, SBI General and yourself? Do you think that there's enough opportunity for all the players? I've always said that uh, competition is very, very good. You know, because all innovations happen when you have good uh, competitors, you know. Uh, I, and I give the example that when uh, the first ATM came into India, I think before that, for my salary, I had to grow and queue up uh, in the bank branches. And if I knew the cashier, it was a big relief for me because then I would get, you know, uh, the dispensation of coming back later to collect my uh, money. After ATM came in, I don't remember when I visited a bank branch. So competition forces us to get better. Competition forces us to innovate. Competition forces us to do, uh, be there in the market for our customers. So all of us are pushing hard in terms of ensuring that a customer gets very good service, our customer really recognizes the brand and sees the value that we're giving in, in terms of products that we give, in terms of service that we bring to the customer. So it's actually very good and I actually want more. In India, we have very less uh, number of players. We just have close to 37, 40. If you look at a place like Singapore itself has more than 200 or you look at UK which has 400, 500 or, or US with 2,000 uh, people, I, I think in India we can have much, much more people coming in. It's very, very good uh, for the industry, for the customer. So we have seen the company in a fairly high growth phase recently. Do you think that this is going to last? Because other players on the con in contrast have been seeing, uh, you know, a little bit of a slowdown. So I, I think let me answer this question a bit uh, differently. Uh, the growth that we look at or, or the business look at has to be something which is uh, rational. It uh, has to be in a way which gives us the right uh, kind of uh, product customer pricing and the way we serve it. So we're not obsessed about just uh, growing. It is not one parameter. We actually look at 8 to 12 parameters of the company and it all has to balance it out. So if you ask me the, how will the growth be in times to come, I don't think I can give you an answer which is very, very clear. Uh, I can only tell you as a company on all the parameters, you will see us evolving into a better, better sphere than what we have been. That is our ambition and we'll keep on pushing that.
Okay. Um, the overall observations and the kind of mega trends that one has seen recently evolving within the industry that you think, um, you know, they're important and you need to take cognizance of. If I look at the government intervention has been big uh, and we're underestimating the power of government intervention. Now, government has come out with three, four big schemes. Uh, one is Ayushman Bharat, in which about uh, uh, 40 crore people are getting covered. Then there's a crop insurance which the government came out uh, with, which again has massive coverage for farmers uh, all across. And I've said this in many, many forums that if I look at, let's say, crop insurance, uh, it's the most effective mechanism of distribution when you have insurance as a cover. Because if I look at the claim ratios in the past uh, couple of years, right, there are years which it has gone over 100, there are years which is close to 90. Where in a mechanism of distribution of subsidy, has the government money reached 90 to 100% of the end user? Uh, we know the statistics earlier that people talk about 20%, 10% as what is reached. It's such an effective mechanism of movement. Now, one is the subsidy moves efficiently. Second is when such a lot, lot of money gets flowed in a system, be it for crop or be it for health, innovation starts having space. And a lot of players are coming in. You know? So if I look at uh, Ayushman Bharat, now I see a lot of uh, news article of big hospital chains going to open the next 200, 300 hospitals. Why? The amount of money which has flown into tier 2, tier 3 towns or villages because of Ayushman Bharat in healthcare. Now once those hospitals are coming in, healthcare starts improving, the average life expectancy of Indians will move up. So even for crop insurance, you have such a lot of devastation happening. You have such a lot of uh, floods um, or uh, drought happening at the same time in the country and this year was pretty, pretty bad from that perspective. It gives us huge relief to farmers. So one big thing which has happened in GI space is the government intervention. And put together, if I look at crop and, and the government health business, they would be contributing 25 to 30 percent for the industry uh, business. So that is one big intervention. Second thing which we see is the health insurance space on an individual basis started uh, moving up. People are realizing the value of uh, having health insurance. Having said that, if I look at the individual retail health insurance sold by all companies put together, will be less than three crores. So it's still not there where it should be, but at least that's a trend moving up. Automobile, because it's mandatory, so obviously people are being insuring it, uh, factories they have been. But awareness level insurance side moving up, not reached there, but I believe that in times to come it's going to get better. Well, digital seems to be a larger um, you know, trigger for insurance companies. What's the strategy here for Bajaj? For me, digital is, is not the fancy word that uh, we would use, you know, saying that AI, ML, blockchain, like that is the most beaten uh, word that I've seen. It actually has to serve a purpose. Now, the way we look at a purpose is, if I look at the trust deficiency which happens in insurance, it's predominantly because people believe that insurance companies uh, don't uh, pay claims, which is very, very funny because if I look at the industry, they have been uh, losing uh, money, which means they've been paying claims beyond the capacity that they could uh, pay uh, claims. Then why this? It is because of the process of payment of claims is so cumbersome that people start believing they don't want to pay claims. The process has been cumbersome because insurance companies want to uh, make it clear that there's no fraud happening. Now, this is where digital comes into big play. Now, those are the times when you didn't have a mobile camera, you didn't have GPS locations, you didn't have social media happening. In today's era, why would you want to question, integrate uh, the customer so much to figure out whether fraud has happened or not? Your analytics, your machine learning, your AI can do all that stuff for you. Your blockchain can ensure that you have all the details that is there for loss uh, from your perspective. Uh, to give an example, if you are uh, insured for travel with us and there's a trip delay, we don't even ask you that uh, what has happened. We know the trip delay has happened because of blockchain and we actually offer you the claim settlement immediately. Or if you have an automobile um, insurer, a claim happens on the spot, you upload pictures and you transfer money to account. Digital is transforming the way services are happening. Or if the mobile insurance is there, we actually pay money on the spot. So that's going to make a huge difference. Uh, fraud analytics is going to make a huge difference. So a good insurance company is going to use and leverage this to the highest play in terms of services they offer to the customers. Okay, combined ratios, where do they stand and uh, where are they headed according to you? So my combined ratio is close to 100 uh, right now. I think if I look at the environment, the industry combined ratio has moved up by at least 5 to 7 percentage points uh, from what it was uh, last year. And with all this catastrophic loss coming in, I think it is still going to look um, higher than what it was been in the previous years. You had five, six catastrophic loss uh, this year uh, playing through. But that's okay. That is like um, uh, seasonal. Some year goes bad and some year goes good. Uh, this year we actually had a lot of catastrophic losses. But uh, it, it would hover close to what it has been. But uh, let us see how it plays out. It's very difficult to 
uh, predict a combined ratio because our business is about uh, risk and, and risk can play at any point in time. And your thoughts on the reinsurance rates, would you care to elaborate? So on reinsurance rates, we have to wait for 1st January to see how it moves up. Japan again had huge uh, cat losses and somebody said it's about $15 billion. So if I look at reinsurers, they also would have lost a lot of money because of cat events which has happened across the country. The general feeling in the market is the reinsurance rates may actually harden for this year. But 1st Jan, not very far, uh, we would come to know where does it stand and how the reinsurance market is going to operate. But yes, uh, this has been uh, a bad year for the Asian uh, uh, companies. You had losses in Australia, you had uh, cat losses in uh, Japan and the industry as a whole had faced that. So reinsurers also would have faced a big brunt on that. So most of my friends in reinsurers tell me that rates may harden, but you never know. I think 1st January would actually give the first indication how the rates are going to be. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for joining in and sharing with us the outlook on uh, the company as well as the overall competitive landscape and how things are shaping up within this space.